Assalamu alaikum, this is Bakhtavi Mahmood and here we are with Kelo Azari. The whole setup is quite different because we have a very different guest in house. He is a legendary cricketer and um, I would say like obviously he has played in all different formats of cricket for the last 14 years and he has proved himself to be a very great resource. We were actually very honoured for his significant role in publicising and admiring Kashmir Premier League at the global level because he stood firm against uh, the hypocrisy and the propaganda against the Kashmir Premier League season one. We have with us the very amazing and the talented Mr. Herschel Gibbs. Herschel, how uh, how are you? And is it okay for me to call you Herschel or Mr. Gibbs? You can call me Herschel. You can call uh, yeah. me wherever you want. Is there any nickname to. that I can uh, like I call you for? I think Mr. Gibbs sounds a little bit too old for me. You know? so, <laughs> okay. uh, no, it's lovely to be here. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I was obviously very happy and. Excited. How has been your experience like here in, in, in Dubai and visiting uh, this Pakistan pavilion and then being here at the Kashmir Premier League launching ceremony? No, look, I, I, like I said, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, last season, you couldn't have asked for a better first season. I think the standard of the cricket was, was fantastic. I did okay. say that, you know, the batting and bowling was exceptional. I think the fielding... Still we'll come to the cricket uh, onwards. I would want to know uh, in, like something very personal about you. Did you ever believe that you can become a cricketer or were you really inspired by someone? Um, well, I took up cricket as a summer sport because I couldn't swim. Okay, <laughs> yeah, couldn't so this swim. was a side job so that I you were So I decided just to play a bit of cricket. I mean, I, my early early heroes were Peter Kirsten and, and Viv Richards. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always liked the way they pr they played the game, and I was lucky enough to to sort of emulate them, and uh, you know also play that attacking sort of brand of cricket. Okay, so you've proved out to be a player of great caliber. But what was the most amazing moment in your life as a cricketer that you would want to share with us? I think uh, you know I think where you where your belief and your and your confidence really comes from is when you get your first international hundred. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you get your first Test hundred, I think obviously Test cricket for me it was always be the pinnacle of, of, of the sport. Okay. And, um, but any specific moment that you can recall? Um, yeah, I think you know it's just uh, the first time you, you get your blazer. Okay. Um, that was very. Special. I mean, and obviously once you get past that, then there's there's other milestones that you achieve. Mm -hmm. There's obviously certain games that are bigger than others that you play, and um, you know we. We won a one-day series here in Pakistan 2007 or 2006 it was. Uh -huh, you know, I uh -huh. think we've never done that before. Okay. There's a lot of things that, you know, you know, it's more than the team sport. Okay. And those sort of milestones and uh, achievements always over, you know, sort of overweigh okay. your personal milestones. Because it's a team sport at the end of the day. Exactly, exactly. It's lovely just to be associated with such a, you know, exciting brand of cricket, exciting mm -hmm. product. Um, it was my first time in Kashmir last year and yeah. blown away by the beauty of the place. That was exactly um, my question because what attracted you the most to be a part of Kashmir Premier League? Was it the scenic beauty of Kashmir as well? No, definitely. I thought the location is, you know, it's one of the better settings I've seen. You know, mm. I've obviously been to lots of grounds around the world and this definitely ranks up with, uh, you know, in the top five prettiest settings that I've seen you know with regards to cricket so wow. very very <laughs> excited huge. To be very very <laughs> excited to be part of you know season two I think um, like I said the standard of cricket last season was fantastic so um, you have played a very brave hard role in publicizing Kashmir Premier League you were getting a lot of threats obviously uh, against the propaganda for Kashmir Premier League what was the motive behind and what were you feeling because obviously uh, if you were supposed to be a part of KPL it would have been difficult for you to join I IPL which was one of the biggest league done yeah I mean I actually it's funny because I got the message Craig Smith obviously the director of cricket in South Africa got the message from Jay Shah about two weeks before I actually came to Kashmir mm -hmm. and um, he said this is the situation that obviously if you go to Kashmir you wouldn't be allowed to play um, to work in, in India with the cricket related to work in, in India, India. Yeah. and um, I then approached you know Saurav and um, I said this is the story you guys are making it political I'm not the one that's making it political you know I, like I said I'm my own boss and I make my own decisions as to where I want to go and if it's cricket opportunity I'm not the one that's bringing any politics into the whole thing and I, and I, and I said to Saurav that I mean it's, it's it's unfair and I think it's not I'm not the one that's making it political they are making it political and he, he said yes it is political I said well that's not my problem 
you the guys are the ones that are making it political and um, you know and like I said I'm very very happy that I made the decision to come to the Kashmir League and I'm very proud to to be associated with it and there's some wonderful players that I've seen and they keep on producing you know Pakistan in general keep on producing these yeah. wonderful players too so there's an immense talent that you know the talent talent runs deep and uh, this is another another product that will obviously see some more big names you know not only play this league but then obviously take it into to Pakistan as well sure sure uh, how would you compare the skills and the game of the local uh, Kashmiri players uh, compared to the any other Premier League that has been carrying uh, carried out internationally look I think I think with regards to the bowling you know there's not much um, you know there's some exceptionally quick bowlers yeah. <laughs> you know it surprises me season after season that they can you know keep on producing these quality fast bowlers um, you know these fast bowlers you know they, they're good enough for this league they're good enough for international cricket too and I yeah. think all these opportunities that they get hopefully you know they take with both arms and and um, you know they get nurtured in the right way and um, like I said I think season two are even better than season one I think mm -hmm. you know there's so much talent here and it's just about them getting the opportunity to to showcase their talent you know I think the temperament is always something that you associate Pakistan with because they're so passionate about the game yeah. you know and I, a lot of the time and, I, and I've seen it obviously played against some of the, the greatest Pakistan players of, of all time that the temperament is always there you know and that, and that passion there you know and sometimes that passion can get the better of them at, at any given stage but uh, you can't blame them for being so passionate you know and it's um, it's wonderful to see but it can also work in the opposite way you know in to you know to not benefit them simply yeah. because they're just so passionate but uh, look I mean when they're on song I think you know there's no more exciting nation when it comes to cricket than, than Pakistan okay so you have like uh, played cricket for over 14 years and you have so many records and achievements in your career is there something that you believe that you should have done or something that you still miss and you want to do right now no I've got no regrets. There's nothing that I could have done. You know, I was lucky enough to play 14 years international cricket. I played 25 years uh, first-class cricket, so professionally. So, if I could have it all again, I'd do exactly the same way. You know, I've I've always been very instinctive. That's the way I've lived my life. I played my cricket, you know, with that instinct, you know, that natural instinct and flair, and that's the way I continue to to live my life. You know, okay. and I wouldn't do anything. I've got no regrets. Nothing. Okay. And, I, and it's the great thing is obviously, you know, to give these guys opportunity. Uh, and, you know, they just got to be, they got to be put in the right mind, right frame of mind to accept it. Because some of them take it for granted. And I've seen yeah. a lot of, not only in Pakistan, but all over the world. You know, it's, they take it for granted, you know, the, the, the first season. And they expect to come back again the next season. But they just don't want it badly enough for, the, you know, during that particular season come back sure. next season so you know my my advice to them would just you know take the opportunity with both hands to take nothing for granted because there's a lot of other players that is around and, and wants exactly what that player wants okay so now I should be moving on to uh, towards a very interesting segment of Kelo Azadi say and that is the rapid fire one Okay, so that is also further divided into few categories, and uh, you need to be very quick, smart as you were in your cricket career. <laughs> like a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so very fast and very quick. One bowler you always wanted to face, but you never ca came across. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can take any name. I can't even get to it. I, okay. mean, I faced all of them. I don't know. Um, Someone from like uh, today or? Um, Joel Garner. Okay, you wanted to face him. Yeah, Joel Garner. Who is your best buddy in Pakistan cricket team? No, I'd say uh, probably Wasim Akram actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you're supposed <laughs> to meet him very soon? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. If you were not a cricketer, which career like you would have adopted? Who I would have gone with rugby roots. Sorry? Rag rugby. Rugby. Okay. Yeah, yeah, rugby. okay. Who is your favorite cricketer of all time? Viv Richards. Which team uh, is your favorite uh, amongst KPL teams? Because considering that there are two more coming. It has to be the Warriors, <laughs> of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You've played around the globe, uh, but which is your favorite place to play the cricket? In terms of the infrastructure in the cricket. I think... Um, I think uh, cricketing-wise, what is always 
mentally a big challenge playing in, in Australia mm -hmm. because you're always up against the best and you know the crowds also let you know that All right. you know they, they never let you rest for one minute there so it's know, it wasn't it wasn't the players yeah. it was hard physically mm -hmm. I think you know but uh, I think also the Caribbean just from a physical point of view mm -hmm. that's probably my from the best to your favorite yeah. place to like cricket yeah. okay now you have to uh, like uh, to suggest one uh, or pick one cricketer according to the categories that I'm defining best dressed cricketer uh, you pick. probably you probably smile when I say this uh, Mohamed Wasim wow <laughs> okay yeah. okay the laziest of all uh, Inzi <laughs> <laughs> I think there has been the yeah, reputation. Yeah. Again. No, I'll tell you why. Well, I'll tell you a story with Inzi. We so would love to hear that. Yeah, so 2003, for the World Cup, I don't know if you guys can remember, you lost a lot of weight. He you did. You lost a lot of weight for the 2003 World Cup. And he had an absolute shocking World Cup. And he said, that is the last time I lose weight. <laughs> 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 and then he put the weight back on and then he scored, he scored runs again. So he just said, you know, 2003, lost all the weight, but he couldn't make runs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the loudest to fall? The loudest, uh, I'd have to say, Makai and Tini. Okay. What did they do specifically that you claiming no, that loud? He used to do funny little things like he used to come for breakfast in the morning and then greet everybody in the restaurant as soon as you walked in. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> so know, and obviously when you hear this, you you know, almost like hide in embarrassment. Oh my God. He's a very, very loud character. <laughs> well, who is the late comer uh, specifically talking about the training sessions? We should come late. Um, I probably also think, uh, no, look, South Africa very strict with regards to punctuality. So there's not too many that I can, off my head, can uh -huh. can mention. Just anyone from any other team, do you um, believe? I think uh, maybe Pat Simcox. Okay. That was way back the late middle 90s. <laughs> okay. That's, that's quite old now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who is the best singer that you've come across as a cricketer? Best singer? That, yeah. No, there's no one. Brett Lee. Do you sing? He, Brett Lee rates himself as a singer, but he's you more of like a guitar. Him. You know, he's more of a guitarist than a, than a singer. So <laughs> he's got to work on his singing. But his guitar, he's actually quite good on the guitar. Uh, but but we do have a lot of good dancers. Which one is best according to you? Best dancers. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. You, you, you can judge. Be sure about you this. can <laughs> judge where they can dance or what, by the way they play soccer. Uh, no, no, a lot I, of them have only got one foot. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know how they can, you know. Take In terms the of the point. celebration. Yeah. Um, celebration. We, I think oh. we should all know. I one could name. say maybe Mohammed Shami. You know, um, Shamsi. Shamsi. He loves okay. a little, you know, he loves a little celebration. I okay. wish he could, you know. Okay. But anyway, don't, don't worry. I, I know this is one.
when you actually play that shot, especially with a quick bowler, mm -hmm. it says a lot about you, about your presence. Yeah, true. You know, so it, that you're not easily intimidated. So, Herschel, I would say that you have performed brilliantly. I would say, like, exceptionally, like, like you, you always used to, to do. You don't have to say. <laughs> like you, you always used to, the, yeah. uh, used to do in the cricket as well. Uh, in the last, I will actually request you to uh, give a message to our youth. What do you have to say to our youth in particular? You know, with regards to the youth, I think it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of opportunity out there for, uh, for you guys. I think, um, you know, the world's your oyster. I think we're only young ones. And, um, you know, I think the energy and, and the passion that, that comes through with, with being youthful, you know, should, should show in your life sort of every day. And when the opportunity arises to take whatever it takes, you know, um, be it sport, be it business, be it anything, st uh, studies, take it with both hands because, like I said, you take it for granted, you know, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and there's someone else that's going to take your place. So um, whenever there's opportunity, take it with both arms and, and don't look back. Thank you so much. Well, that was all from today's Kelo Azadi Se and we promise that we're going to give you a, read another exceptional guest in the next episode as well. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz. Hopes.